Hello. It's nice to meet you. I'm Catherine and welcome to my gardening consultancy office. So, have you visited us here before? Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about what we do here. So, we consult with our clients about the kind of garden they'd like to create and the goals that they have for their garden. And we can advise on different plants that they would want. For example, if you wanted a garden to attract lots of wildlife, then we could provide a selection of the best plants to give you that. And we can also advise you on when to plant if you want a garden that blooms at a particular time of year or even if you want a different selection of plants at different points during the year. So am I right in saying that you are interested in creating a garden with lots of medicinal plants? Okay, well of course and you probably already know this but first thing is to plant lots of fruits and vegetables that are essential for your health. All of the vitamins and minerals that they contain are vital from everything to do with brain function to your immune system and everything in between. So that's root veg, leafy greens, lots of different types of fruits. But I'm guessing you came to us because you were looking for something so with those as a foundation, there are also lots of medical plants that I think would be a great addition to your medical garden. So today I'm going to use my trusty Ku Botanical Gardens Medicinal Plants book to recommend Agrimonia eupatoria or Agrimony. And they have beautiful yellow flowers and big leaves. And in medieval times, Agrimony was used to treat wounds and they used to make an infusion with Agrimony for dysentery, to treat dysentery. And Modern studies have proven its antibacterial properties and it's still used to help treat skin ailments and as a goggle for mouth and throat infections. So. The next plant I thought or you might have heard it referred to as Jack and the Hedge. So, historically it was used to treat wounds and improved circulation and modern science has affirmed its antiseptic and anti-inflammatory properties. Um, it's also a great source of vitamin C which is vital next plant, which is vital for every medicinal garden, is Allium sativum. Um, better known as garlic. So this is the medicinal plant that I use most often in my everyday life 
because every time I get a cold or the flu or COVID, I crush up raw garlic and I eat it. <laughs> um, and this is because garlic is a powerful antiviral, so things like antibiotics don't work on cold and flu because they're viruses and antibiotics are for bacteria. So garlic being an antiviral helps your immune system to get rid of viruses. Um, but if you're not as psychotic as I am, then you can blend it with honey to make an oxymel and I don't exactly know what an oxymel is but it's whatever this says it is and it's some sort of honey and garlic infusion that you can have to make it easier to taste basically um, but yeah garlic is essential to your medical garden absolutely my number one recommendation and if we turn over onto the next page this will probably be very familiar to you as it's aloe vera and aloe vera has been used for thousands of years it was used by the ancient Greeks and the ancient Egyptians who used to call it the plant of immortality and even today, the gel inside the long distinctive leaves can be used as an antibacterial gel for wounds and really any sort of wound, so mouth ulcers, anything like that, it's great for. So yeah, that is another essential for your medical garden. And just on the following page is Aloysia citradora or lemon verbena and as well as having numerous health benefits it also gives a great lemon smell to your garden plus it has lovely pink and white flowers so compounds found in the flower and leaf are thought to be neuroprotective and help your memory and studies have also indicated that it protects against Alzheimer's. Moving on to a little further in the book. So here we have Daphne Genqua, or just Daphne, as it's often referred to. And this is one of the traditional 50 herbs used in Chinese medicine. Multiple studies have investigated and found potential anti-cancer and anti-tumor properties in this plant. It has beautiful green leaves and lilac-y violet flowers as you can see. The next plant that I think would be a great addition to your medical plant garden is Hypericum perforatum and this is also known as St. John's Wort which you might have heard of because I don't know if it's just mine but my grandmother always tells me to use it whenever I have any sort of problem. Um, and as well as being antibacterial, St. John's wort has also been proven to have antidepressant action. It also promotes repair in the body and supports the immune system. So if you want to grow St. John's wort, it prefers moist soil but well drained and is to be harvested in the summer. looking for my final few recommendations. So, 
Linum lusitatissimum, otherwise known as flaxseed in the US or linseed in the UK, although I think most people call it flaxseed in most parts of the world. I often call it flaxseed even though I'm from the UK. So flaxseed, as well as having oils which are being investigated for anti-cancer properties, the seeds have many potential health benefits. Um, research supports the fact that they aid in treating cardiovascular conditions and support the gastrointestinal system and also they particularly help to defend the gastrointestinal system from pathogens that cause illness. So it's a very talented, multi-talented plant. So So, the last plant that I'm going to recommend you today, because I think we've got quite enough to be getting on with, is Sambucus eagle, and this is And elderberries are also antiviral and are purported to aid with coughs and colds and actually illness um, lots of other respiratory problems because they prevent pathogens from I'm actually not sure if I'm holding that up high enough <laughs> they prevent keeping our lungs healthy and free from disease. There's a recipe in here for making elderflower vinegar, but if you already have a sore throat or a cough and you want to soothe your throat as well as help yourself get better, then you could also turn the elderberry So I think that's quite enough to be getting on with. That's lots of plants for you to plant and garden. If you find, you're fine with maintaining them and you want to expand your medicinal plant garden further, then please come back to me. I'd Garden looks in.